Hello everyone, and welcome back to the series on elementary probability and statistics. Today we're going to be introducing another probability mass function that has numerous number of applications. We'll discuss some basic ones today and some more advanced ones in the near future. Before we get into this new PMF, let's just recall a PMF that you definitely should have already experienced by now, and that's the binomial probability mass function. We know the PMF for binomial is given by n choose x times 1 minus p to the m minus x times p to the power of x. And what does that mean? Well, if x represents the number of successes in a finite sequence of independent trials, where the number of trials is n, then x represents the number of successes uh, in our particular sequence, and 1 minus p to the m minus x corresponds to the number of fails, uh, failures in that sequence, and then choose x just means that once we rearrange those failures and successes, it pretty much satisfies the same structure for which we desire. But one important thing about this is, for example, Let's assume that you want to have five successes, uh, but you're only given six trials to make that happen. Some people are like, oh, that's almost impossible, especially if your probability of success is extremely low. So one question or one point about binomial is that the number of successes is limited, right? In particular, by m. So a natural question you might want to ask is, suppose I want five trials uh, or five successes, but I want to be able to try as many times as I want. So can we break this limitation limitation uh, by making by making n go to infinity? The answer is yes, and the distribution that answers that is what we refer to as the Poisson distribution. So let's first off build the Poisson distribution uh, to sort of see where it comes from. So what we're going to do is we're going to start defining a new parameter, which we're going to refer to as lambda, which is going to be equal to the number of trials times the probability of success, which in case you do not remember is the expected value of binomial random variables. So lambda is equal to n times p. So if I ask you what is p equal to in this equation, you divide both sides by n and you're going to get lambda divided by m. Right? So what we want in this particular expression, we want n to go to infinity. Right? So we want n to be arbitrarily large. So let's see what happens in our probability mass function when we make n go to infinity. And obviously you should see that p uh, goes to zero as n gets close to infinity. So our probability mass function for binomial is equal to n choose x, which once we expand is m factorial, times x factorial times m minus x to the quantity factorial. And then we're going to have 1 minus p to the power of m minus x times p to the power of x. I now want to replace uh, p with lambda over m. So that's going to give us n factorial all over x factorial times m minus x factorial times 1 minus lambda over n to the power of n minus x. And then we're going to have lambda over n to the power of x there. Once I have that, I just want to slightly rearrange this expression algebraically to give you uh, something a little bit more meaningful. In particular, I want to have lambda to the x over x factorial in the front. So I'm pretty much grabbing my x factorial there and my lambda to the x term right there. And then I'm going to be multiplying this by n factorial all over n to the power of x times m minus x the quantity factorial. So I'm grabbing this n factorial here, this n minus x factorial there, and the n to the x term at the very end. And then I'm going to have uh, this term left and I'm going to decompose it with respect to its exponent n minus x. Uh, so I'm going to have one minus lambda over n to the power of n, and then one minus over lambda over n to the power of minus x. So once I rearrange this, uh, and I take our limit as n goes to infinity, so right now this is still a binomial distribution in disguise, uh, notice that this term does not have n in it. So what I want to do is I want to take the limit as n goes to infinity for this particular object and see what it comes out to. And for you theory people, you should be able to prove this on your own. And for you non-theory people, uh, I will tell you what this is equal to. But what you're going to get is e to the minus lambda. right? So you're just going to have e to the minus lambda. You know that complicated looking expression here? Just turns into this very simple looking e to the minus lambda. And in case you do not know what e is, e is a number, 2.71828 approximately. 
right? So we're gonna have e to the minus lambda times that term that didn't have n in front of it. So we're going to have e to the minus lambda times lambda to the power of x all over x factorial. So you have this very interesting, which is binomial, as then goes to infinity, which we call the Poisson, Poisson probability mass function. So what is the primary difference between Poisson and binomial? So it's still the number of sequence, uh, number of successes in a sequence of trials, but the number of uh, trials that you can have, 0, 1, 2, all the way down to n, now goes on to infinity, right? So more precisely, this is 0, 1, 2, all the way down to infinity, right? Uh, one uh, very interesting property, uh, and I'll state this as a theorem for you non-theory people, and this is actually not super hard to prove for you non-theory people if you know Taylor series for exponential functions, uh, but the expected value of x is equal to lambda, and the variance of Poisson random variables also equals to this lambda. And this expected value of lambda, uh, which keep in mind is the average uh, number of successes in our sequence, uh, pretty much gives a meaningful uh, interpretation of what this lambda value actually is equal to. Now let's put this Poisson probability mass function into practice with a real world example. So let's suppose that customers arrive to a restaurant to eat independently of other customers. So in terms of going to this restaurant with your friends or as a group or with your family is not considered here because technically speaking, one coming to that restaurant depends on the other if you come in as groups. So this is only individual arrival times. Let's also assume that the average number of customers to arrive in any business day is approximately 35.4. So if this is Poisson, uh, then Lambda is equal to 35.4. So if x is the number of customers, customers uh, per business day, uh, then you should be able to see that x belongs to the interval 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to infinity. Um, yes, 5 billion customers arriving in a single business day, highly unlikely, but technically, theoretically possible. Unless you put an upper bound on that number of successes, then it turns into a binomial. But since we do not have an upper limit here, this would likely be Poisson, provided that these trials are independent of each other. And these are binary trials, of course, because either you arrive to the restaurant or you don't. So therefore, x is Poisson. In particular, the lambda value is given to be 35.4, and keep in mind this is per day. So what is the probability uh, that the number of customers that arrive uh, in this particular day is equal to 35? So we can write that as the probability that x is equal to 35, or in probability mass function form, uh, px 35. So it's going to be e to the minus lambda e to the minus lambda times lambda to the power of x all over x factorial. And once you actually work out that math, that's going to be approximately equal to 0 0.0671. So it's approximately a 75, 7% uh, chance. And what does this statement mean? This means that 35 customers arrive in one day, for example, today or tomorrow. Let's do another uh, probability problem. Instead of equals, let's do an inequality. So what's the probability that at most, at most 32 customers, at most 32 customers arrive in a business day? So in mathematical form, how we can we write that says the probability that x is at most 32. Uh, which is going to be equal to the probability that x is equal to, so what's the smallest value that x can be? So no people could come. Uh, and then the next value in sequence is 1, and then the next value in sequence is 2, all the way up to x is equal to 32. Now by hand, this is extremely annoying, uh, but we can simplify the calculations immensely because all of them are going to have an e to the minus lambda, as part of their calculations. The only difference is we're going to have lambda to the power of 0 over 0 factorial plus lambda to the power of, what, power of 1 over 1 factorial plus lambda to the power of 2 all over 2 factorial all the way down to lambda to the power of 32 all over 32 factorial where lambda is equal to 35.4. And if you have a calculator or software that will do this calculation for you, you will find that this is approximately equal to 32.07% uh, chance. Let's do another one. Instead of at most, let's do the other way. So what's the probability 
um, that more than 40 customers, 40 customers arrive in a day. So if we were to write this in mathematical notation, this is the probability that x is bigger than 40. But keep in mind, Poisson variables are not bounded above, so if you want to do this by hand or even in finite form, um, you should be able to look at its complement. So keep in mind, this is 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 40. So what is this going to be? So that's going to be equal to 1 minus e to the minus lambda, again. And then we're going to do lambda to the power of 0 all over 0 factorial plus lambda to the power of 1 over 1 factorial. 1 factorial, plus all the way down to lambda to the power of 40, all over 40 factorial. And once you substitute your value of lambda to e to the minus lambda, and then subtract that from 1, you're going to find that's approximately equal to 1 minus 0 0.8065, uh, which subtracts off to 0 0.1935. Right? And that's how you can do probabilities for Poisson problems. So there is one natural question that you could follow up with. Uh, what about what about customer arrivals customer arrivals per week? Um, because there's so many things that play a part with customer arrival times, whether it be the weather, whether it be the you know the stress, politics, you know other holidays that could be going on simultaneously, and so on. Um, but how could you solve problems about arrivals per week? So there's at least two different cases that you could consider to be able to solve or at least approximate this type of problem. So the first case that I want to mention, so case one, is that each day, each day is identically uh, distributed and independent, in particular independent, and identically distributed, you might see people write this as IID uh, from other days, from the others, right? So from the others, from the others, right? So each day is independent of each other. So uh, 50 customers arriving today will not affect the number of customers that arrive tomorrow. Uh, and they have the same exact distribution. So they're all Poisson, they're all independent arrival times. Um, and they're all the same exact lambda, moreover, right? So lambda for Monday equals lambda for Tuesday equals lambda for Wednesday. That's not a W. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right? So all of our lambdas are equal to each other. So that's what we mean by identically distributed and independent. They do not affect each other. So for our particular example, remember our lambda was equal to 35.4 and that's per day. So if we want to get a lambda parameter for a week, then lambda will be equal to 35.4 multiplied by 7, and that's going to be equal to 247.8 uh, customers per week. So then you can ask, uh, ask and also approximate answers of the following form. So what's the probability that x is equal to 250 in a week? So now you need to be using a lambda parameter for a week. So that's going to be equal to e to the minus lambda for a week uh, times lambda for the week to the power of 250 all over 250 factorial. And then once you have a calculator that can actually handle this calculation, because 250 factorial is really large, you're going to have approximately 0 0.02498, right? So there's approximately 2.5% chance that 250 customers arrive to your restaurant within a week, assuming that the assumptions above are met. Another case that you could consider uh, if they're not independent and identically distributed, so let's call this case two, is that each day, so each day is independent and each have different distributions. Each have different distributions, moreover lambdas. So for example, if we look at our day and then we look at the associated lambda value, for example, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, obviously, on average, some people might uh, go to restaurants more often on the weekends uh, because maybe they're working. 
uh, during the week. So you might be able to see a lambda distribution of say, okay, 35.4 on average people come on Monday, maybe 32.1 on Tuesday, 28.7 on Wednesday, 22.4 on Thursday, 38.9 on Friday, 72.9 on Saturday, and then 68.1 on Sunday. Um, so with this table of lambdas, you can easily say, you know, what is the probability that five people come on Tuesday, two people come on Wednesday, 20 people come on Friday, 520 people come on Saturday. Now, once you start mixing days, obviously things become a little bit more complex, but with more advanced math, you can definitely solve what is the probability that, you know, 500 people come across the entire week with these different lambdas on each day. But we won't get into that here, but that is just something you can think about for the time being. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.